The Ars Attack Invicta pedals belong to the best pieces of sim racing equipment I've ever tested. Heck, they even made me a better driver on track. But I ran into one big issue that made them not for me. And with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg in yet another episode of Joe's Hardware Corner. Today, with the Azatec Invicta pedals, a review many of you have been looking forward to for the last couple of months. I've been testing this set of pedals for over 8 weeks now and it's finally time to review them. This set was kindly provided by Azatec, but as always this review only contains my personal and sincere thoughts and is not sponsored content. And I know, my intro might have you confused right now. How can this be one of the best pedal sets I've ever used and still I don't want to keep them? How does that make sense at all? To explain what I mean, we have to start at the beginning. The Azatec Invicta pedals are the flagship model of Azatec's pedal lineup and shipped for 899 US dollars or 756 euros. They are equipped with a hall sensor accelerator and a hydraulic pressure sensor brake pedal which can withstand up to 100 bar of pressure. Which is just nuts if you think about it. I think the tires on my old Citroen C3 had like 2.3 bar in the fronts. So yeah, on the homepage it states that the brake can withstand 396 pounds, which for normal people is 880 kilograms. <sighs> Seems like it's lag day again. The Invictors are PC only, sorry console players, and connect via a USB-C to USB-A cable to your machine. Usually the first thing that comes to mind when you see this pedal is that the design definitely played a key role when coming up with a first concept and that everything is kind of built out of one block, which reduces the customization options, right? Yes and no. Of course, you can't change the spacing between the accelerator and the brake pedal as this is one big block and there is no way of yeah, changing the space between the two. But there are other ways to customize them. For example, you can switch the position of the pedal face plates uh, via screws here and here and like that you can yeah get them basically in the position you want them to be and that's a really good compromise you can move them again and again however you want to uh, have them there is a position for everyone and thanks to the very robust construction of the pedal arm it doesn't feel strange when driving either and on top of that, you can customize other parts of this pedal set with everything that is coded in orange. Let's turn them around. As you can see, there are many parts actually that are orange and they, yeah, influence different things and they're all hand screws as well. So you can actually change the lever position with this screw so you can have it a bit further to the front or more to the back, which can help with heel and towing if you get the add-on with the clutch then you could have the brake a little bit more to the front and the accelerator a little bit more to the to the back so you can easily blip the accelerator when uh, um, uh, downshifting. Then there's of course preload which you can add to the spring for example as well as to the brake here at the bottom of the cylinder and you can also change the pedal travel at least to some extent. You could also switch out this metal spring on the accelerator to a softer one which comes in the package but I don't really get why you would ever want to do that. Having a faster travel back to the neutral position is always better and gives you yeah, more feel for trailing um, the accelerator in the end. And this pedal set is not really designed for children either so if you're thinking about getting this for a child. Um, they won't be able to do much with it because the brake is super stiff. Although you can soften up the brake pedal with different elastomers. And it's really easy to swap them out as well. Just unscrew the tightening screw here, then the preload screw underneath and then just take it out, swap it out and screw everything back together. It's easy as that. And then just replace it with the rubber you desire. You can go for a harder one or a softer one. but in the end, and let's be honest here, be prepared that there never will be a lot of 
pedal travel because they are not designed for that. This is an incredibly stiff pedal. Because that is the big selling point of the Arzatec Invictus which brings us a lot closer to the reason why I won't keep them. The Invictus were modeled after real life racing gear, just using optimized materials to make them as sim racing friendly as possible. But one key feature is that the brake pedal is as stiff as possible so that you can fully benefit from muscle memory. You see, your body is exceptionally well in uh, memorizing how hard you brake something with your foot compared to how far you have pushed the lever. Which makes a brake pedal like this one better for learning how hard you need to brake for a turn in the sim. And this really applies to this pedal set, which is crazy. At the beginning I was thinking to myself, yeah, but without much pedal travel will I be able to trail brake out of turns and I was really amazed how well that worked you don't need actually the pedal travel all you need really is the feeling for how hard you're pressing down the brakes and you will be able to trail perfectly out of it it was amazing and yeah this pedal set made me better at braking and made me more consistent with the braking itself i guess that has to do with the elastomer that sits in the slave cylinder that gets pushed inwards when you press the brake and that you can feel the squishiness of that thing in the end but you don't really have to understand it you just have to feel it and find out for yourself if you like it or not and for me this system 100% worked. I can say that driving with this pedal set feels like a charm performance wise and that nailing each and every braking zone was never easier. And it didn't even take me some time to adjust, quite the opposite. It clicked for me the second I started using them. As you can see, I really like the Invicta pedals. But before we come to the big but, let's have a quick look into the software as well. Just like with the Forte or the Invicta wheelbase, everything is controlled by the Race Hub software, where you can update the hardware, change the LED strips color and brightness, and where you can calibrate the set, which you usually do once and then never again. Because thanks to the clever design on the Thorpe hydraulic cylinder, it's really unlikely that it A will lose any fluids that are used in this cylinder system and B that the rubber insert will dilate over time. Which makes them super carefree and they will withstand a lot of years without you having to do basically anything. And let me tell you, hydraulic systems, they struggle a lot with those two points. So they're usually very high maintenance, which makes the Invictas even better. But now let's finally talk about the negatives that feel highly subjective this time. And that's just how stiff the pedal is and how user unfriendly they are for people that don't want to drive with shoes. First up, the heel rest, which is an absolute nightmare for sock drivers. Yeah, the Azatec branding really looks nice, but it's made out of metal and it sticks out somewhere near to where your foot rests. That paired with the pedal face blades that were designed to grate cheese <laughs> make the Invicta just incompatible with sock drivers. And let me tell you, I tried to race them with shoes, but as the first day come around over 30 degrees Celsius now in the summer, this idea was out of the window again. It's just not for me. So I needed a plan B and there it is, the Forte face plates. You can buy those for an extra 40 bucks in a store. And let me tell you, they are by no means perfect either. Can you see the pattern that is engraved in the uh, face plate for the brake? That one hurts like hell too. Of course, it's not as bad as the original one, or rather this one, the original one, but it's a fair way from being comfortable when driving over longer distances. I, I really don't get why why is this engraving there? Why just not go with something like that is uh, like the accelerator? Just nothing that will hurt your foot. And then this cheese grater mixed together with how hard you have to actually press the brake to get the full amount out of it. Yeah, you can you can calibrate it and you can use a soft rubber in it and it will it will be better for sure, but still this is this is like pressing against a wall. Even though you can make it softer, it will be a, a slightly softer wall. And this, in combination with how hard you have to press, is just 
it will cause some pain if you don't race with socks. If you race with socks, it's a bit better, but still, it can be really uncomfortable. As I said, I was sporting this pedal set for over eight weeks. And in those eight weeks, I drove 50% races in the new F1 game together with Rene. I drove one hour races with my community in Assetto Corsa and did a lot of other stuff with them, uh, driving without socks and with socks. It's not getting better over time. You're not just adjusting to it. Of course, with the new faceplates, it was much better, but still those pedals, even though you have to afford the faceplates, they are designed for people that drive with shoes. Which brings me to the following conclusion. Are the Azatec Invictus a genius pedal set for a reasonable price? Yes. Are they built quite well and less prone to error? Yes. Was I super consistent and is the hard break, best break mentality actually true? Again, yes. Are they a pedal set that you can drive without any shoes? Uh, kinda, but not really. Which makes them not for me. The pedals that are way better in that regard are the ones I use as a daily driver. You can check that review if you click here. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time around. Cheers.